Hello everyone, I'm Pris from Be Innovative and in today's video I will tell you our tips and best practices on how to prepare and what tools to use in your remote workshop. So power up and let's go! Let's jump into it. So the first thing is preparation. When you prepare, start with the why what would be the outcome and try to work out an agenda thinking backwards. What we need to do in order to achieve this outcome and uh, this feeling for the participants. And if you are expecting more than 15 participants to join, it's a pretty good idea to involve a co-facilitator as well because um, this is how this person will help you to oversee the chat, maybe answer some questions, to join to breakout rooms and solve every upcoming issue with regards to technology, sharing screen, muting participants that you may not have the attention or the energy for. The next thing is to plan with breaks, having like maximum one and a half hour long sessions just like you would do in a personal setting to have people uh, get a little bit of stretch stand up go to a restroom drink a coffee and get back to the session fully energized and inspired With people joining virtually from different environments and different countries and time zones, you really need to have a very well structured agenda. And by structured, I mean with strict timing. Because unless you have a very strict timeline with all the activities that you set almost minute by minute, the participant might get disengaged and uh, your structure might just fall apart because in this remote setting you will less likely to improvise and just go with the flow. So when I prepare my agenda, I usually have the following points on the slides like an intro, problem framing, ideation, evaluation, conclusions and next steps. This is for the participants to know. But on the other hand, I have a much more detailed agenda about which activity will come exactly when. Then part of the preparation is practice. And by practice, I don't mean rehearsing and writing down full sentences, because keep in mind that if people are to follow what you are saying, the best is to keep the sentences short and uh, concise and to the point and much more natural because that's the most engaging way you can talk to people. Because if you tend to write out your sentences, look at the tendency that we always write a bit more complex sentences, a bit more longer ones, and if you just read them out, it's much harder to follow them. If you still think that you need to write out your sentences, then it's okay to like maybe record it and hear them back. Is it easy to follow? If not, try to break your sentences into shorter ones and try to like just underline the most important points that you don't want to miss and maybe practice with like a natural flow. Okay, so I, we are getting closer to the end of the preparation and to the event. Before we get into this, you have to have the right tools ready. I really like Zoom because of the breakout rooms. And um, if you are running an interactive workshop virtually, this is kind of the most important element of um, an online coding system that you will use. In most of our workshops, we spend like 70% of the time in the breakout rooms and only 30 together with everyone because the breakout rooms are the perfect place for people to um, either discuss in pairs 
share experiences about a specific topic or to tell more details about um, a drawing they just made. And then, of course, everyone can show uh, their outcome, but it will be just uh, one or two people who really talk to the group about uh, what they came up with. Besides Zoom, definitely feel free to use Microsoft Teams, Skype for Business, Slack to keep communication going, um, or your just preferred conferencing tool. The other type of tool that you will definitely need is a kind of platform where people do their activity. You can use Be Innovative for opening up a challenge, inviting participants to your topic, and um, because of the AI-facilitated ideation sessions that will happen in small groups, people go through the ideation session facilitated in an automatic way, so that's going to be pretty easy for you. That People share ideas, they move forward to impact feasibility voting about what are the best solutions according to everyone, and after like 30-35 minutes, you will already overview what are the best solutions and what people suggest to move forward with as a conclusion according to everyone who have participated in the session. We also very much like using Be Innovative for creative problem solving because people enjoy the anonymous um, way of sharing ideas and also evaluating the ideas. This is pretty similar with a virtual canvas and virtual post-it notes, just like you would do in an in-person setting. Another tool you can use is um, virtual whiteboards, just like um, Klaxon, Miro, Mural, um, or your favorite ones. But if you would like to use very basic whiteboards, Zoom also has a built-in whiteboard for you to uh, draw on, uh, make um, some sketches or to type on it. But it's fine if you just want to use uh, Google Slides or a doc, but the simple it sounds, the more difficult and complex it will get when you want to make it really interactive and engaging for the participants. So I would more recommend to go with the first couple of options. Two more tips on devices, specifically on um, doing the calls themselves. One is that you can start the session by muting everyone. I would highly recommend it if you have more than 30 participants that you expect joining your session because um, the first couple of minutes will just spend with hey, do you hear me, uh, do you see me, and um, there will be for sure someone with a strange noise from the background that nobody will know whose dog is barking. So in order to avoid it, start with mute. But if you have um, a friendly group joining, it's totally okay to leave the voice on and uh, ask them how they are feeling, are they feeling safe and healthy and what's going on basically on their side, just to warm up and engage them. Great, so you have your tools selected. You can visit the websites of all the companies. We highly recommend to contact your support team. They will surely answer you and it's best if they know about your session coming up. Maybe you can do just a short call with them or with us. And um, maybe we can take part in your session as well in the background so that if you just have an urgent question, we will prioritize it as urgent because your workshop is soon coming up. And um, this is the best way you can also learn about tips and best practices using a specific tool. So leverage the support team. I'm sure this support team will help you run a test session as well. But in case you want to do it on your own, feel free to, to go on. But 
running a test session with your selective tool is pretty important because you want to test out everything, not just the interactive session, but also how the Zoom uh, call will happen, what people will see, what if um, you start with a poll, how will it appear, and what will participants experience as they go through the ideation session, evaluation of the ideas on impact feasibility or your selected criteria, um, adding suggestions and reaching to the results. Thank you everyone for watching and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up because it would really support our channel. See you soon in the next one. Bye!